What's up guys, it's CJ from SmartKTai.com. Samsung updated their Galaxy Tab 10.1 Honeycomb tablet today with a new TouchWiz user experience. And of course, we're gonna take that for a spin, but before we do, let's first take a look around the stock Honeycomb experience so we can note any changes. Uh, so here we are with stock Honeycomb. Let's take a look around all the basic areas. Uh, here's your app tray. I'm not sure if there'll be too many changes there, but we'll look at it anyway. Moving on over here to the bottom left, make sure to note uh, how these icons look along with the black bar at the bottom uh, because that will soon change. Of course, you can access your uh, recently used applications right here. If you move over to the bottom right, uh, if you tap on that clock, it'll give you access to your settings and uh, your notifications. So be sure to note this because this is definitely gonna change too. Let's go into our settings menu, take a look around there. Go back out, swipe around on the home screen. I'm not sure if there'll be any performance boost, but there are definitely some added features. I have some basic widgets uh, load up, loaded up here as well. Of course, we can add uh, different widgets and customizations through this menu. So I'm gonna go ahead and update the Galaxy Tab uh, to the new TouchWiz user experience, and we'll come back and film uh, that review so you can see what's different. All right, so the update took about 10 minutes to install. I've been messing around with the new features for a few hours now, so let me show you what's new. Right off the bat, you can see we have some newly designed widgets. Uh, Samsung's calling this the magazine style, and they're calling them live panels, but of course they're basically just widgets. Down here we have a newly designed bar. Uh, more on these later. What I wanna show you first are the new mini apps. So you can see we have a little arrow here letting us know there's something down there. If we tap on it, it pulls up this new bar uh, this new menu with six different apps. They're called mini apps. Samsung thinks these are the apps that you want to have access to while you're using other apps or playing games. Uh, I'll go through each one of these one by one. So here we have the task manager and as you can see it's floating uh, over all the uh, other objects on the screen. So you can still access whatever it is you're doing. Uh, you can pull up you know your tray you can even be playing a game and still have access to your mini apps so this is basically multitasking uh, although it's restricted to the mini apps it's still multitasking and it's good to see uh, on the tablets so you may be wondering why do we need this task manager when we have uh, this button built into honeycomb well this is just a task switcher uh, it allows you to switch between your recently used tasks uh, but it doesn't allow you to close them so that's where the task manager comes in handy you can actually close out of apps and then also uh, there's a minimum amount of uh, RAM management as well where you can clear your memory out and check the status. So I'm gonna exit out of there. I noticed that you can actually swipe up to access uh, the mini apps as well. You don't have to just tap on that little button. We have a calendar, pretty basic calendar here. Uh, you can add appointments and then access your calendar application. I won't go into that right now. Next up, we have a world clock, pretty self-explanatory. I probably won't use this uh, too much. Pen memo, this one could be useful. Allows you to draw on a little notepad and take notes. You can also use your keyboard. Let's pull that up real quick so we can use our keyboard and type things out. Uh, one thing you'll notice here is swipe is actually built into our Galaxy Tab 10.1 now. Uh, so the TouchWiz update, does add the swipe keyboard. Uh, you can also have your uh, standard honeycomb keyboard and your Samsung keyboard as well, but now you have a third option here. And of course, we reviewed swipe in a previous video, so if you wanna check out the features, be sure to check the, that video out. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below. But one thing about the swipe keyboard for tablets is it allows you to resize the keyboard and move it around on your screen. So this allows you to uh, use just one hand to swipe out words. So I'll go ahead and test it out real quick. This is a test. All right, so pretty simple there. And of course you can expand it as well. But enough about swipe, we'll exit out of the memo application. Actually, let me pull that up real quick and show you the other features. You can erase whatever it is you wrote and you can also customize uh, the brush, the color, pen size, eraser size, and also change the theme of the notepad there. All right, moving on, we have a calculator. Of course, this can be useful as well while you're 
you may be browsing the web, doing some shopping or something. Uh, let's go home actually. Pull up our mini apps again. Music player. So if you're uh, a lover of music, you'll definitely be using this while you're browsing the web and doing some other uh, things, maybe playing games or something like that. But we'll go ahead and exit out of there and let's move on here. So let's start over on to the left. Uh, here we have an AP mobile widget. Uh, here's the older bookmarks widget and the calendar widget as well. Uh, notice how we have multi days on the calendar. Uh, keep that in mind because I'll show you the new widget in a second. Next page, we have a social hub. So this basically aggregates all your social media like Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and uh, it also adds your emails and messages as well. So it puts it in the one central hub. And as you can see here, we have a scrollable list. And if you open it up, it'll actually expand that view into uh, the social hub application. If you tap on a tweet, you can at reply. You can access the link and of course we can cancel that out. Uh, here is a little gallery widget. I want to show you resizing while we're here. So we can make the picture really small, medium, or make it large. Uh, pretty cool that uh, they have the ability to resize more widgets uh, with this update. Alright, so let's move on here. Uh, next page we have an AccuWeather widget. Tapping on the different options will take you to the AccuWeather website. Below that we have an agenda widget. So this is a, a calendar uh, based application or widget. It just shows you the single day because it is for agenda so it's a little bit different than the stock widget we have for the calendar. But if you tap on that it's going to take us to our calendar and this looks a little bit different here. I'll just go through the different options just to show you what that looks like. All right, we'll jump out of there. Clock widget, you can set an alarm quickly. Then we have uh, an email widget. So we can combine our inbox or show individual inboxes as well. And if you tap on the uh, little uh, writing symbol there, you can compose an email quickly. We can jump into our email. Just to give you an idea of what that looks like. Pinch the zoom. Go ahead and jump out of there. Over here we have a bookmarks widget. Uh, so that's just for a single web page. So we'll go ahead and test out the new browser. As you can see, there's some different uh, elements here. The theme is a little bit different, a little lighter color in the background. Uh, let's just check out how it performs on scrolling. Pretty good. Pinch to zoom uh, works as well. So. Uh, it doesn't seem like there's any uh, browser performance issues uh, after the update. So let's go ahead and pick the tab up and the new feature here is motion control. So if you tap two fingers on the screen at the same time like this and then tilt your device up and down that allows you to zoom in and out. I'm not sure how useful that's going to be. Uh, maybe some of you will find it useful. Of course you can just pinch the zoom uh, so that might just be a novelty feature there. So I'll jump out of there. Below that we have a widget for our task manager as we saw before with the mini apps. Close out of there and let's swipe over to the next page. Swipe over again. Here's a world clock. Here's the full application for the pen memo uh, feature. It's a little, little bit larger than what we saw with the mini apps. We have ebooks. Now, this is a little different than what you're going to see with Google Books. Uh, we'll load that up and note some differences here. You can see the page animations are a little bit different. And if you tap on the screen, uh, there are a variety of options here. So we can highlight, we can actually take notes right on the pages which is pretty cool and then we can erase and also use different colors and highlights. Moving on here, text options for font, brightness, you actually have text-to-speech 
So let's go ahead and let that read real quick. Tin Woodman clocks a rose. The army of Belinda the Good looked very grand and imposing. All right, I don't know if anyone would actually use that because it sounds too much like a robot, and that's a little creepy. Uh, search and then bookmarks. So enough of the books application. Sort of iPhone is there with a shelf. Media Hub. Here's a cool service allowing you to uh, search for movies and TV shows. Let's go ahead and try that out. And you can preview, you can buy the movie, or you can rent. We'll go ahead and preview. Let's see how this goes. Alright, so this movie is based off of Angry Birds Rio. Let's go ahead and put that mini apps uh, to use. Say we want to see if we have time to watch this movie today. Pull up our calendar. Bam. We can check out our schedule right there while we're checking out uh, the trailer. Alright. So jump out of there. Go back again. Check what options. Movies. Different categories down here. We have some top picks, TV shows, my media. I'm not signed into that, uh, so I won't be able to show you that. All right, so that is the media hub. Photo editor. This is pretty cool. So we'll edit a photo here. Pull up a picture of this dog. Uh, we have options to select. Rectangle, ellipse, lasso, grab. Jump back. Uh, we can resize the image. Let me cancel that. Crop the image. Uh, color adjustments. So we can auto adjust. Uh, exposure. Let's check out auto adjust real quick. All right, not bad. I'm going to cancel out of that though. Show you some other options exposure saturation uh, contrast I'll go ahead and do that real quick all right brightness hue all right grayscale and temperature down here we have uh, special effects like blur so you can have different types of blur motion filters frames make it look like a Polaroid maybe a faded frame there blurred frame and then you can copy to another image copy to an original image fill selected areas so pretty robust uh, photo editing application built in now and of course we have words with friends. I'm not sure why that's added, but now we get that with the new TouchWiz update uh, and then the social hub update as well. Okay, and moving on, you can see the menu bar is now gray instead of black and the icons are a bit different. Uh, these look a little different than uh, what Samsung previewed way back when they first showed TouchWiz. Uh, those were a bit more cartoony. These aren't too bad here. Uh, the gray color may take a little bit time to get used to, but at least the back of my Galaxy Tab is gray, so it has a little bit of matching uh, effect there. If you tap on the clock, we have a new menu here. We have quick access to options like Wi-Fi, notifications, GPS, sound, auto rotation, Bluetooth, and flight mode. So quick toggler is there. Very convenient feature. I'm glad they added this in. We've seen it with their smartphones now. It's on their Galaxy Tab 10.1. We can also adjust our brightness. Uh, we have the usual notifications that we can X out of. And then we have our settings. We'll go into there. You can see it has a lighter theme to it now. It's no longer a dark theme. Just tap on some options, give you a quick look. Not much has changed here aside from uh, the theme so I won't go through that uh, but I'll just back out of there a few more points I almost forgot to mention let's open up the app tray on stock honeycomb you actually have outlines of apps letting you know that there are more application panels you don't have that anymore but you do have a subtle fade in and out effect for those applications also if you look down here you have indicator dots letting us jump quickly 
to a particular panel and that's the same case for your home screens. So you have five dots, you can just tap on any dot and it'll take you right to that home screen. Jump back to the default home screen. Another thing I want to note about some of these widgets, say the uh, weather widget, if you resize it, the images and text will actually adjust to fit that particular size. So you can see uh, it doesn't look weird if you resize that down. Same thing for if you make it into a square. Uh, the icon changes and so does the text. So let's make that large again. Same thing for the uh, bookmark. You don't have to have that big square. You can make it a rectangle or a smaller square as well. If you look down here, we have a fourth button. That's actually to take screenshots. So it's a screen capture button and that'll copy it to your clipboard and then move it into your image gallery. So very convenient. You do not have to be rooted to use it either. All right, I could do that all day. So let's swipe around real quick. Final thoughts. You know, I think they've improved uh, swiping performance here on the home screens. So it's buttery smooth when you go really fast, as you can see, but also when you go slowly, it doesn't seem to stutter as much. Uh, with stock honeycomb, for some reason, the frame rate just didn't look right. It would look like it was stuttering a bit. This looks more smooth, in my opinion, but maybe I'm just seeing things. And while we're swiping from home screen to home screen, let me mention one last thing. Usually when you have to move an icon from one home screen to the other, you tap and hold and then you bring it to the border until it switches over to the next home screen. And then you have to keep doing that until you get to the home screen you want. You don't have to do that anymore because there are actually motion controls now for that. So you tap and hold on the icon and then you just tilt your device left and right. So tilt left and right to move it around until you get to the home screen you want to place it on and then you just drop it. So convenience feature there, I'll probably be using that a lot. Uh, so this was a look at the new TouchWiz user experience on the Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1. So what do you guys think? Do you like the new features and customizations or would you prefer a stock honeycomb experience? Personally I was a bit surprised to find that I do like many of these additions. Uh, some of them are a bit questionable, but that's all right. I can live with them. Uh, one thing I am a little concerned about is whether this will affect Samsung's ability to push out system updates in a timely manner. I guess only time will tell, so I'll keep my fingers crossed until then. Anyway, let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.